Hi ladies, welcome to March, so fun. I'm Ann and I'm a North End uh, consultant and this is... I am Gail, I'm a South End consultant. And we are doing March, so fun for you. Um, I have a saying up in the North End that there's always something that has nothing to do with anything and a lot of times we can't work all of the products into our presentation. So I'm gonna show you a few that we have that we're not working into the body of our presentation. The first one is the Oh So Clean kit. If you open it up, you get a microfiber cloth, you get a couple of brushes here. Now, I saw this brush on Facebook, it's brand new uh, a couple weeks ago, and you can get into the deep crevices in your sewing machine to clean out all that lint. This is also a, like a little miniature paintbrush. Its bristles are a little bit uh, stiffer, and so you can use that to clean your machines. I belong to quite a few uh, Facebook groups for sewing machines, and a lot of times um, you can alleviate problems with your sewing machine if you keep them clean. So we're wanting you to keep them clean, and this is a great way to do it. We also have the ruler stick and uh, the thread wrap. Now this is a little bit thinner, and I like it better because it doesn't come undone. The thicker seems to come undone no matter how, um, how much you cut off of it, and I think this sticks a lot better. But something that I'm doing with it is I have been buying quilting rulers for probably about 25 years, and they don't have the non-stick on the back. The new ones will, but your old ones won't. And so this ruler we sold, oh, a few years back, and it doesn't have any grip because it's an older ruler. So what I did was I just took the strips, just lay them on each side of your ruler like this, and press it down, and then your ruler is not gonna move anywhere. You just need two strips for each ruler, and it really works great. Okay, Gail, do you wanna tell them about the thread stand? Sure. So we are gonna be featuring quilting today, and sometimes you end up with a quilting thread um, that doesn't quite fit on your machine the normal way, so we're gonna use a thread stand. And so today we have an adjustable thread stand. Comes in a box, uh, looks just like that. Okay, you gotta put it under the camera. Well, I think they can see right here. So this is going to extend like that, and that's going to allow you to put your cone thread on here and run it up through um, the little hook at the top. And that is going to sit behind your sewing machine so that you can use large cone threads um, on your embroidery. Very handy that you can uh, collapse it and it can fit in your bag to take with you too. Okay, we're gonna move on and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna talk about edge-to-edge -edge quilting with your sewing machine, with your embroidery machine. Um, this is a very popular program and we're gonna walk you through how you use it. We've brought in the edge-to-edge -edge quilting on your embroidery machine book and it's by Amelie Scott Designs. And when you buy this book, this is the Bible of edge-to-edge -edge quilting. And before you start it, you need to uh, read through. There's a couple of wonderful videos on YouTube, and she walks you through the process. Some of us like to read. Some of us like to be visual learners. And so when you buy this book, it walks you through all the steps. And then in addition to that, you get 10 different designs that you can use for edge to edge. Now, I've been doing edge to edge for a couple of years and you're gonna see some of the things that I've done in the past that have the, the designs from CD number one. There are actually 11 CDs that you can buy. Um, they retail for $20 each. What I would suggest that you do, um, this is a very, um, this is really a, a wide variety of designs and I really like them. The first time I used any other packs is when we brought in her newest pack, which is Expansion Pack 11, and there are 10 different designs here. These packs retail for $20, so what I would suggest you do is you check the designs out online and then you go to your local store 
quality sewing and vacuum. Take a picture so you remember which ones you want and they will order them in for you and you get your cell phone discount. So it's a win-win situation. Now, as I said, I have just used these on most of the projects that I've done. These take three minutes to stitch out. You're going to be doing multiple hoopings, but if you, I'm gonna tell you how much time it took me to stitch out some of these designs on the various projects. The new designs will take out, take you four minutes to stitch them out. So there really is not that much time in embroidery. And one of the things that I like to tell the ladies is that um, it's either time or money. You either spend the time or you spend the money. And I'm gonna tell you how much money I saved on doing a, a little baby quilt. Um, you've got a lot into the, the quilt with your fabric. And if you can do the quilting, you can save yourself a lot of money. Okay, now I'm, I'm going to turn it over to Gail and she's going to talk to you about some of the edge to edge um, ideas. Thank you, Anne. All right, so as Anne mentioned, this is a way to do your quilting in the embroidery machine. So we have multi-format discs, which means you can run it on any brand machine that you have. And it also comes in different sizes. So if you have a different hoop capability, then uh, you can do this particular collection in a, a six by 10, um, all the way up to an eight by, um, eight by 14. And some of the ones on the expansion pack number 11 go even a little bit bigger because our machines have gotten bigger over the years. So one of the nice, um, um, options that we have for hooping your quilt is what's called a magna hoop. Now this is, a, I'm sorry, this is a snap hoop, monster snap hoop. This is a magnetic hoop. This comes apart, makes it very, very easy to hoop up your quilt. Now they have included this little corrugated um, thing to separate the hoop because the magnets are so strong, if you don't have fabric or something in between, it makes it really, really hard to pry these things apart. So watch your fingers. Now, we're going to um, go ahead and show you real quick how this happens um, on the machine. So I've got an embroidery design that I'm going to put in here. And while she's talking about that, these hoops are made for each model of machine. So when you go into the store to order them, uh, you need to know the model of your machine because they are made uh, model specific. And no, the magnets do not hurt the machine at all. That's been a question that I've had as I've traveled around. We don't have to worry about magnets anymore. All right, so this is one of the projects that was done um, with that hoop and that system. And I am going to go ahead and hang on to that part right there. Get my fabric in here. Now, of course, this one's already done. Um, but this is how it was hooped up. Now, it can't be any easier than that for hooping your fabric. Let's pretend that I have uh, stitched out one of these patterns. You're gonna start in the center and work down, and then you're going to match. So I don't know if you can see my camera here, but I have a design that starts on one edge of my hoop. It is going to do line quilting as it follows around my pattern, and it's gonna end over on the other side exactly across from where it started. So this lets you do line quilting or edge to edge. You can go um, this design and the next one is going to sit right next to it. And where it starts here um, is right here where the first one has ended. And you're just going to stack them uh, left to right all the way across your project. So I am going to put my fabric in the hoop here and put the hoop in the machine. Now this has uh, several different methods for lining things up that she talks about in the book. And a couple of them are using templates. So you can take a tearaway stabilizer and stitch out the design. This is what it looks like actually stitched out. Um, and create a template. So what Anne has done is draw a line around the inside of her hoop. This was a larger hoop. Um, so that she can set this inside 
her hoop the next time she's going to use this for placement. And we've got the camera over there. I'm just going to slip it over here a little it's bit. It's also important to draw your centering marks because the, the vertical one will be how you line it up making your first call. Okay, so after I have laid this template down on my fabric for placement, I'm going to put my little um, starting line right where my last ending line um, was on my quilt. And then I'm going to use that reference uh, to place my fabric for hooping. Set that down for a minute. Now, um, you can use that as what she calls pretty darn close, which is, you know, just going to get you in the right area. Depending on your thread, if you have a very uh, dark colored thread on a light colored fabric, if you have um, something that's really going to show, you might want those um, old hooping and the new hooping to line up exactly, or you can be off a couple of stitches. I also like to use the snowman on my machine. Uh, those brother machines that do have the camera, you might as well use that uh, to full advantage. Now, uh, you can use it to place the snowman part of the design. Once I go into embroidery, I'm going to show you this real quick. I have the wrong size hoop on here, so it's not going to let me. Um, I can choose <coughs> for the snowman feature on my machine to find either the center of the design the bottom of the design, the side of the design, I have that choice anywhere around that hoop. So I use uh, the snowman in the center of the side of my design and that will find exactly where that next one is going to start. All right. <laughs> um, I think what we'll do now is I will show you some of the templates that we've stitched out. And by the way, this hoop has... By the way, this hoop has um, cutouts on one side so that your fingers can get uh, underneath it and you can lift it up very easily. It is very strong, but, but even if you don't have the strength in your hands as you used to, it still is very easy to uh, get a hold of. So that was some of the questions that the ladies had uh, in some of the other uh, seminars. Okay, what I wanted to do now is I wanted to show you some of the templates that we have uh, stitched out. And then um, I also want to just point out everything here on the wall that has been done with edge to edge. This is a lap size quilt. Gail did this with edge to edge and she did it on her domestic machine. Um, I, have a cust I have a couple of customers in the North End that do quilts, queen size quilts this way. So the option is yours. Um, I'm gonna let, uh, do you wanna just explain your quilts sure. and tell them what you're doing and then I'll explain mine. We're sort of flying by the seat of our pants. Yeah, I'll go ahead and do mine. Um, this, first of all, I'm going to show you this table runner here. And it is out of the book, and it is the jelly jar runner. What it's made from is you choose 16 5 inch square charms, charm squares, and then you cut them down to two and a half and piece them back. Then you're going to set them on point. At, with your setting triangles, and I added a border. A lot of your modern quilts do not have borders, but I needed something to pop the quilt, and so I chose this peach uh, fabric here. I wanted it to look like Easter because Easter is coming up, and we have a beautiful uh, design. It's called Bunnies and Carrots off of CD11 that I used to quilt it. Now, there are two choices, well, there's many more choices, but there's a couple of choices that you can make in thread. Gail's going to be talking about the types of thread that she used, and I, I wanted texture. When you want texture and you don't want your threads to necessarily pop out, you use a uh, thinner thread. And in our stores, we have a wonderful selection of 
the Quilter Select 80 weight thread. That will give you texture. We also have the bobbins that are the same weight. And so if you're wanting to just get texture, use a, an 80 weight thread or a 60 weight Quilter Select thread. And I'm gonna show you some examples of that. Um, this is the first uh, and well-loved sample that I made. Um, it is probably a couple years older. It's been washed. I used a 100 weight thread on this just to give it some texture. Um, I actually prefer the 80 weight to the 100 weight, but that is what I had at the time. Um, this is the leaf design from CD number one. Um, show you this. Can you move the camera down, down here? So. I can't. Okay, this right here is one that I did in a previous sew fun. And one of the things that it shows is that you can create your quilt or your table runner and then add the borders. You don't have to quilt out into the borders. However, I usually do quilt out into the borders because if you don't, it kind of makes your quilt look a little bit wonky. But as you can see, I have added the borders and they have not been quilted. Now, if you notice this beautiful um, daisy right here, it is stitched with 60 weight. There's a lot going on here in this table runner. And so I didn't want my thread to pop out. I wanted it just to be an accent. And this works beautifully with the 60 weight thread. Now you can pair a Filtech bobbin which is 60 weight with the 60 weight thread, or you can pair it with an 80 weight thread if you'd like. And so this was just a fun one um, that I did. And then, um, let me see, where's the, oh, this over here. Now I remember when I did this, this was in ju uh, June of last year. And when I pieced it together, what I wanted to have happen is I did not want my stars to be interrupted, the color of the stars. I wanted it to sh shine through. And so I chose, um, I chose another 100 weight thread or an 80 weight thread would work just as well. I remember uh, from one of my seminars last week, a lady was sitting in the back and she said, you know, you really can't even tell that there's thread on it because it just gives you texture. And so that's what I wanted to share with you, is you get to be the designer. There is no right or wrong. You get to design and you get to see um, how much you want that thread to show through. The last project that I did, this is out of the book, and it is called, uh, <laughs> that always goes out of my head, paint chips, okay? You use six half yard cuts, and it will do the whole top with the exception of your sashes in here. Um, very easy to put together, goes together fast. I have about 24 hoopings on this, and I use the 60 weight Quilter Select thread, and I did wind my own bobbin from that because I wanted the same bobbin on the back. Um, I used the circle design off of CD number 11, and this is a perfect one for quilts because it's a little bit uh, closer together. The stitching is a little bit closer together. And I had some extra pinwheels, so I just put them down the back of the quilt. I have to tell you this. You know when you're reading a quilt pattern, it's gonna tell you either the finished block size or it's gonna tell you cut your uh, fabric this size. Well, I didn't read close enough and I just cut them out and I got them all stitched and guess what, they were too small. And so I thought, foo foo, I'm not gonna just put these aside, I'm gonna put them down the back. Fortunately, I bought extra fabric and I was able to make um, the pinwheels the right size. We make as many mistakes as you guys do. We are not perfect and, you know, it's just fun to share. Now I want to tell you about this quilt. I 
In our area, we pay at least three cents a square inch for quilting. So I figured up how much this was gonna cost me and how much saving I had. The quilting alone was $84. If I spend three cents a square inch, it would be $84. On top of that, I would have my batting, which I have a, a supply of batting at home. And sometimes they charge you for the thread and then we have to pay the governor tax. So I've got well over $100 just in quilting and guess how long it took me to do this. It did take me, um, I did about 24 hoopings. They each take four minutes a, uh, each. And so I have, um, you know, I have most of the day I spent quilting, but guess what? I saved over $100 and $100 is $100. So it really is worth your time and effort to, to invest in some of these designs and to use your machines. And remember, you, you can get a magnetic hoop for most of your machines out. Our stores have uh, charts and you can tell them this is my machine and they will tell you exactly which hoops that you can use. The last thing I wanna do before we move on is I just want to sh uh, show you the uh, templates and some of the designs so you can see them in just a little bit bigger um, fashion. But you know, Gail, after, after, okay. So I choose to, to stitch out a template A and a template B, okay? That's um, following the book. You can certainly uh, expedite it by doing what uh, Gail has said. So this is the leaf off of uh, CD1. This is the circles off of CD11, and it works really, really well for uh, baby quilts and, and quilts in general. This is the holly design, and you can use this on guy quilts. You can use it holidays, things like that. I've done that. Um, here is the daisy stitch. And I love this, it uh, just stitches out and, it, and you can use it on multiple things. Here is the star design, this can be used for holidays, it can be used for just um, outdoor quilts, or if you just like stars, little kids love stars on their quilt. And then the last one is my fun uh, bunny and carrot design. So those are just some of the designs that you get in uh, the two different packs that we are offering you today. We are also offering you a book. Um, this is called uh, Quilts You Can Make in a Day. There are 14 different quilts from table runners to uh, wall quilts to table toppers um, and just regular quilts. You can see Gail has made a, a, a guy quilt here and it is a lap size quilt. And guess what? With your sofa and discount, you get to buy 14 patterns for $7.99. And so that is a great savings for you because the patterns are less than 50 cents a piece. So how can you not want this book? Okay, Gail, why don't you take it over and you can talk about the way you do your templates and talk about your projects. All right. So as Anne had mentioned, uh, this paint chips pattern is in this book. And also that uh, table runner up there with the peach on it is also in this book. So this is the uh, jewel, see I always get names uh, mixed up too, cut jewel runner. That is also out of this book. And as she said, um, the guy's quilt, which you know any girl would love as well and that's called gentle waves. This can be done in any fabrics you like. It's very easy to put together. Um, but I did decide to go with some uh, denim looking uh, cotton. We have uh, Ritz crackers, we have power tools, and we have um, pretzels. So, hey. Um, the pattern that I chose to quilt that one with actually has bear steins and the word cheers. So, to me it's kind of a guys, but you know, some girls like bear as well. All right. Um, this one was done with one of the patterns in the uh, number 11 expansion pack, these very geometric uh, shapes. And this one was done with one of the designs on the number 7 
I mean number 11, I'm sorry, um, expansion pack which has Scotty dogs on it, which matches my little Scotty dog fabric. And the one, oh, this one has um, some flowers from the original book. All right, so as Anne said, she has um, an A and a B stitched out on the tearaway stabilizer um, for her hoopings. Now, this is going to be a little bit harder to see because it's see-through, um, but this is vinyl. And I like to do my templates out of vinyl because I can stitch through this vinyl. Uh, but when I'm done stitching, I can also see my fabrics very, very well right through there um, to see where those are going to line up, um, to see my start and my stop um, positions to put my next one on. An A and a B in this um, technique, I have them marked A up here and B down here because this is your A and this is your B. Now the reason she does that is it's going to give your quilt a little bit more interest and it's not going to look like tiles where you have exactly the same design, block after block after block after block. Each row is going to go the opposite direction. That's going to make things um, look a little more spaced out. So your A's go that way and your B's go that way. The only difference is where they start and where they stop. Okay. Okay, why don't we uh, show them the Swiss country silhouettes? Okay, uh, just a couple more minutes on thread and then we'll skip on to that. Okay. So this was a very, very heavy weight um, variegated thread that I used to quilt this because I really wanted the thread to pop. The, the thread was um, part of my design. This one was a lightweight, same color white, so it would blend in and give texture like Anne's. And then this was a denim looking thread and if you get up close, it is very heavy as well. Um, I did wind my own bobbins. Um, you do give up ease and convenience when you wind your own bobbins um, and with a very, very heavy weight thread, I had to wind a lot of them. But um, this quilt did get done in about a day and a half for me and that's in between other things. Um, 45 hoopings, but like she said, they only take about 45, uh, four to five minutes each and uh, they do hoop up very, very quickly. So give Edge to Edge a try, and I really, really like it. I know Anne does as well. Yes, I'm, I'm hooked. I'm not a free motion person, but I'm an Edge to Edge. Okay. Why don't you just show me your okay. So we're gonna move on from quilting, and this is our um, OESD Swiss Country Silhouettes Embroidery Collection. This has eight different, uh, no, I'm sorry, nine different embroidery designs, and they are done in three different sizes. I took three different designs to do this. Um, I've got the house, the tree with the ducks, and the tree with the deer, and spaced them out like this. Then I took each of those and reversed them and stitched them out again. Now to figure out the layout, I brought them into my software, just so that I could line them all up and see them. Uh, but I did bring them in individually and uh, rehooped each time and just did them along a straight line along the bottom and used the camera on the machine again to line those up. So cute little silhouette. I have been mural. telling the ladies that this is stunning and I've never used stunning with the word brown. <laughs> but this is a beautiful stunning table runner and the ladies have loved it. Great. So this uses an embellished matte finish thread, so there's no shine. Also gives it um, just a little bit different look for the silhouettes. We're having camera issues with my computer. Sorry about that. I apologize. I don't know why it keeps switching back, but maybe it's because my mouse yep. moves. So we're going to get rid of that. Just... Also with those silhouettes, I'm going to reach the pillow up there. I decided to go white on red. That's another common theme with the Swiss. Um, so this is one of the large sized um, patterns and put it on felt and put the two layers of felt together with a little bit of trim uh, to give me a cute little pillow. So it doesn't have to be black and white. 
Doesn't have to be black and white. All right. You know, I've been doing so fun for many years, and I have been telling the ladies this. I really love working with Gail because she's always outside the box. She's very creative. I am always inside the box, and I'm always trying to get out. And every once in a while, I will get out of the box, but Lana and Gail are so wonderful and creative. They're always out of the box, and so that's a, it's a pleasure to work with them. Okay, I'm going to show you what I did. The very first thing that I did was I decided that I would do some tea towels. And I have four different designs. This one, we have some roosters. This one is a cow. It kind of reminds me of my dad who had a cow ranch in eastern Washington. This is a little girl, and I love this design. I think it's just very sweet. And then we have a wreath here. Now, when I noticed, uh, when I looked at the designs, I noticed that they're, they were a fairly heavy stitch count. And so what I did was I played around with the, the density, and I'm going to tell you, you don't have to do that. It works just perfectly fine the way it is. And all I did was I hooped up my tearaway stabilizer and my towel together, stitched it out, and it, it turned out beautifully. And so that's all you need to do. I decided I wanted to make a soft side basket here. This is what a pattern that I did in so fun years ago. And I had one at my house and so I just replicated that. You can replicate it very easily. All it is is just the corners are boxed. I do have Annie's soft and stable inside. And I think what makes it different is the handle here. Now you can embroider over any soft and stable. Um, I've done it many times. It gives you almost a trapunto look. And so I made this and the four towels and I think it will make a, a very nice gift. Okay, I think what we'll do now, um, I wanted to show you this little gizmo here. This is, um, let me put it under the camera. What is happening with this? I guess we need a new computer here. Sorry about that. This is um, the, the blade, blade saver and cutter, uh, something similar to that. But what it is, it's new on the market. And it comes in two pieces here. You put it together, and then you put one of your old rotary cutter blades in it, and it will um, serve to cut your chain piece quilt blocks apart. Now, I've never used anything like this because I didn't think I needed it. I just used small scissors. But we got this in, and I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it, and guess what? I will always be using this. Now, it stores away. If you go to your retreats, it stores away like this. And then this is magnetic. It comes together like this, and you're good to go. And guess what? It has little grippies here, so you can set it up on top of your sewing machine here. And this is what it looks like. It's called the Blade Saver Thread Cutter. And um, it just is a really handy little tool if you are a quilter. I think we'll move on and we'll talk about flipping out. Flipping out is a pattern, the newest pattern from Annie's. If you went to um, Expo, you will see you would see this. Uh, she was introducing it at Expo. I have made many Annie's patterns, and this is by far the easiest one. There are two sizes. You can see here's a small one. Here is the large one. You fold it down and then you can put anything in it, knitting needles, you can put sewing equipment, and Annie said you can even put a bottle of wine in it and give it <laughs> as a gift. So, um, Gail, do you want to? Right here. Uh, let me just tell them about mine and then I'll give you the mic. Um, she says to quilt the lining to the Annie Soft and Stable, but you don't have to if you don't want to. But the outside is not, she does not suggest that you quilt the outside. You can add a ribbon trim here, and then you have inside, you have four mesh pockets. 
everything is done in the flat. And she will give you a template to cut this rounded edge here. So the pockets and the gusset that has a little flap here, um, you can certainly store things in here. That's what gives it its shape, but everything is added in the flat, and then what brings it together is your zipper. Now, this is zipper by the yard, and you cut, she suggests you buy a 40-inch zipper. It doesn't need to be that long, so all I did was I just pulled my zipper by the yard apart. I think I cut 32, 34 inches, and then you just add your zipper pull here, and it zips up, and closes nice and neatly up here like this. And it even has a little hook. You can uh, hook it on a hook if, you're, if you have one on the wall. Now, the way that you're going to finish off the zipper, and I wanna do this under the camera, Annie suggests this, and this will work on anything that you add a zipper to. When you stitch the zipper in initially, you're going to peak that edge over about an eighth of an inch, and you're going to uh, pass the cut edge, and you're going to stitch in here a quarter of an inch. Then when you fold it down like this, guess what happens? It finishes off the cut edge. And so that works really well. Um, I had never seen it done until I started doing Annie's bags and it finishes your zipper off nice like this. Now, I have to say that Gail did a better job in putting her zipper in here because my zipper tape wasn't as wide as hers. And guess what? Every so often I had a little bit of uh, Annie Soft and Stable showing. So guess what I did? Since I was working on black fabric, I took a Sharpie and I colored it in. And now it looks like I did a beautiful job. So Gail, do you want to go ahead and tell them about yours? Do um, you want to just tell them how you did the bob bottom as well? Sure. Okay. So um, the idea behind this is you are going to put all of your stuff in there. When you fold this down, it's going to sit next to your sewing machine at class or at your sewing room, and everything's going to be easy uh, to grab right there at hand. Uh, it's a little notions holder. And then, um, as you can tell, you fold up the edges, you zip it up, and you throw it in your bag, and it's all secure. So you do build this outside piece flat, as uh, Anne said, and you put a binding around uh, the bottom of your top part. You also build your bottom. That she did have you quilt, and you put a binding around that as well. Now, after looking at her instructions, I think it's more of a facing than a binding. You're going to wrap it in fabric, um, but I think you pull it around enough that it's, it's more like a facing. Um, then you butt those two pieces together, and I was able to get those underneath my sewing machine, and like a little quilt sandwich, um, put those two finished edges together and sew them all the way around. So they're finished. Very, so. very fun, very easy. Yeah. And people love things like this. I use every one of the bags that I've made for sofa in through the years and love them. So Annie's um, is great. Do you want to go ahead and tell them about our wire rim sure. Uh, sure. cosmetic case? So my little secret for going around the corners and stuff for getting um, all of that in there is if it doesn't quite fit in there, um, I have scissors. So I'll just go back and, you know, trim <laughs> it idea. off after I've sewn it um, so that I can make it tuck in. So Yeah, good secret. idea. I love Sharpie working works with Gail because she comes up with all these ideas that are time-saving. Okay, so our next pattern, the wireframe cosmetic case, is probably the simplest bag I've ever made. Um, it really yes. can be put together in about a half an hour. It is so, so easy. Um, this is one of the samples. That is our pattern. Um, we also have one done here in the glitter vinyl from a few months ago. And we have another cute little simplicity fabric one. So these are going to be a basic squared off bucket bag. There is a simple box on the bottom of each of these, same as in the lining. And then you sew in a casing next to the zipper and you insert the two wires that come in the pattern. Now the pattern includes your zipper and your wire 
as well as the directions. And when you do that um, and fold those wires down, that creates that top for you. And it gives it that look of a fun little bag. Now you could do the insides lined in vinyl for a little cosmetic bag. Um, you can use it for putting your notions in, your paintbrushes, your whatever you want. I've got mine stuffed with that. Anyway. Um, gives you a cute, cute little bag now. Okay, well, I decided to do some, uh, Joann's has a new line of Simplicity uh, vintage fabric, and so that's what I did. Now, one of the things I will tell you, the instructions, I want you to change one thing. She has you, she tells you to make your bag and your lining, and then hand stitch this lining down to the zipper tape. Don't do that. If you've ever made a purse, you make your purse, you make your lining, you leave an opening in your lining, and then you stitch the, the uh, top together, right side to right side, and then you pull it through your lining and turn it inside out. Make that change unless you love to hand stitch, okay? And then as Gail said, the casing is just done. She will tell you where to leave this opening in your uh, side of your lining here, that's where you insert the frame. And guess what the frame does? The frame just holds it open. It just holds it open really nicely. And um, as Gail said, you can make these very, very quick. I use zipper by the yard because I'm kind of a matchy matchy person. Um, and then I wanted to do a uh, experiment. We brought in the glitter vinyl. I have to have glitter in my life every day. Um, I have it in all different colors. Now what I'm suggesting is that you go online and check the colors, take a picture of it, bring it into your local quality sewing and vacuum, and they will order you a roll. Um, it comes 12 inches wide and it's about 48 inches long so you can get multiple projects out of it. And save all of your scraps because you can make tabs and things like that. Now I decided the only thing I have in this bag is glitter vinyl and then last November we sold Slicker which is an iron-on vinyl that you can make fabric uh, water resistant. I'm not going to say waterproof because um, Nothing is totally waterproof, but water resistant, and that's all I have. No interfacing, no fusible fleece like she suggests. That's all it is, and I did put a double zipper here so that I can zip it up. Actually, I made this for my only granddaughter. I have 11 grandsons and one granddaughter, and she just graduated from beauty college, so it will be a great thing for her. Now, the one thing I wanted to tell you about Zipper by the Yard, and I know I tell you this every time I do a, a use zippers, when you put the zipper by the, uh, the, the uh, pull on your Zipper by the Yard, they suggest that you put all the pulls on right when you get it, and push them to one end and then you cut from the other end. And also when you put the poles on, make sure your rounded end is the one that goes onto the zipper teeth because if you try to put that flat end on, you're gonna have to start again and cut off a little bit of your zipper. So this was just a really fun project. I wanna make more. They, they go so quick and they are so fun. What would you like to do next? Why don't we do this, okay. and then we'll do the um, aprons, sure. Sure. okay? So. For those of you who, like me, love paper piecing, we have this wonderful collection. This is a watermelon placemats. There are six placemats in the package. They're over there. And uh, if you put all six placemats together, each one is a slice of watermelon, you put all six uh, together on a table, then you can make um, a whole piece of watermelon and uh, fill up your whole table. So I have one finished off here, and each of these um, is done the same way. Uh, Quiltworks Northwex, quiltworks.com, that's right, um, does the paper in their pattern. So you have all the papers right here. They're very, very easy to remove. And she has a system of pre-cutting your fabrics, 
for each placement, which saves fabric and it also makes sure that you have a piece that's the right size uh, to fit that um, place. And you also build all six at the same time, which means it goes much, much faster. So it's just a fun little um, quilting project using paper piecing. So from Timeless Treasures, um, we have some beautiful fabrics as well. Now that same vinyl that we brought in that I used for the templates, now this is just um, a regular vinyl. It is not an iron-on, it's a clear, heavier vinyl. Um, you could also use to coat your underside of your placemats. So you can have them look pretty on your table like this. And when it comes to be uh, mealtime, then you can flip them over, put the plates and everything on them, eat from this side, wipe them up, clean them off, and flip them back over again. And they're still all nice and clean. Great idea. <laughs> so. a great idea. All right. OK. How about if we do apron time? Sure. So you have one and I have one. Should we put on our aprons? Yeah. All right, she's gonna grab those real quick. So both of these patterns are from Vanilla House. Uh, we have the six corners apron, that's mine. And we have the totally centered apron, and that is Anne's. And I know that mine was fairly easy to put together. It was two huge squares of fabric um, that you actually cut corner to corner into triangles. One is on the front side, one is on the back. So it's totally lined as you go. And then you just overlapped uh, the two triangles and secured them with buttons. Now you add a little pocket with the scraps. And I would suggest that you do a little bit measuring on yourself um, for the ties. I did go ahead and use um, the measurements in the pattern and they are a little high-waisted for me, so um, you do need to make sure that you have those adjusted to fit the person that's going to wear it, but it is a very, very cute apron, so. Some of the ladies um, in my last presentations said this would be a great guy apron, a great barbecue apron for guys, and so Gail, why don't you walk out and show them what a fun uh, front that it has kind of dips down on each side and yes. it's just a lot of fun. <laughs> we didn't know we were going to be models today either. <laughs> okay, um, this one is called the centered apron and it does have pockets and so I would suggest that you decide if you want the pockets up higher or down lower depending on um, what happens. Now I would make this a little bit longer, it's a little bit high um, for me. And I was concerned about this pattern because years ago, Vanilla House had out the one yard pattern. And I felt like it was not going to cover, I'm a larger person, I like my aprons, I wear them every day, I want them to cover me. And guess what? It does a great job and it has really nice long ties here in the back. And so I was really pleased with that. Um, I did not have a yard and a fourth to do the front panel, I had a yard and it worked out just fine because it's, I wouldn't want it any longer. So I buy my fabric in yards. I don't buy it in yard and a quarter. If I buy it specifically for the pattern that I would do that. But you can use one yard pieces for this. And um, I just think that uh, they're just a fun take on an apron and who doesn't like an apron? Um, I could, certainly do. Right, you could add an adjustable strap as well so that it could fit yes. uh, multiple uh, different people. Good idea. I would add an adjustable strap. And I probably would make my strap narrower. I don't have a long, long neck, and so that kind of bothers me because it's kind of up here. I've always wanted this long neck where you could just wrap scarves around and look elegant, but I didn't get it. So. Anyway, why don't you grab the towels. towels. Okay, we have the hanging towel kit here. And it is just a really fun kit. It is from uh, June Taylor. And when you buy the kit, you get a towel and you get the pattern that is printed on the uh, batting here. Now, what I would suggest that you do, my daughter made these up for Christmas. She made 27 of them for her office party. She cut some towels, uh, some, some of the uh, towels in half, like you, the kitchen towels, 
and she took a pattern off of it before she cut it apart. So take a pattern off of it. People simply love these things. And um, you can't make too many of them. They go together fast. I also had one of my customers in Bellingham. Last time Gail and I did so fun together, we did the kitchen bolo. She made 37 at Christmas time, and people are asking for more. So things like this, they are great, and um, they make great gifts, and they work up fast, and so this is a pattern that you're going to want. So you can do it as, as the uh, instructions suggest, as Anne did, or you can do them you know, at midnight and opposite than the way you're supposed to, and you get a little bit of a different design on it. There's so, no right or wrong. There is no right or wrong. But what I had done was I took my uh, fabric, it comes in a rectangular fashion, and I just uh, sewed it the wrong way around. So I sewed it long ways instead of um, short ways, and so I don't have as many pleats, and I have a little bit longer um, towel. So It still wipes hands. It do, Yes, it does, yes, with my cute little frogs on the bottom. So anyway, either way you'd like to do it, um, it does still clean your hands. Okay. All right. Do you want to talk um, about our... Other book? book? Yeah. So um, our other book today is called um, A Year of Potholders 2. So not many of us need uh, 52 potholders all at the same time. Um, but what this book does give you is 52 8-inch quilt block um, patterns. So you can take these patterns, um, make it into a potholder, see if you really like that pattern, if you're willing to make it more than once. Um, and then you can branch out and make that into something else. Now, if you mix and match uh, these with a primary block and an alternate block, um, you can grow that 52 blocks into a multitude of projects. So we do have some individual pot holders over there. Um, and then I did take my, one of my pot holders and I grew it into a um, table runner. So the place... I didn't do a good job of flipping it all on. No. So the uh, pot holder in this case is um, from here to here, halfway through the pinwheel and halfway through the project. That is the block. And I just multiplied it by 12, made each pinwheel a little bit different color, um, and added a border. So I have a table runner instead of a pot holder. So from over here, we have a couple of matching pot holders. These are um, one of the quilt blocks. This would free up some space for some embroidery. Uh, you could do some uh, free motion quilting patterns in here. This one I actually had uh, two layers of batting or um, some insulbrite in there because this is a working pot holder. You don't want to burn yourself. Uh, made it very, very puffy. And then I found some focus fabrics, some cute little block fabrics, and I did just a couple of fussy cut, very easy square and a square type patterns to accentuate um, the fabrics here. And with these, I added the working part of the pot holder onto the back. This is another product that you can use for pot holders. Um, this silver lining, you can also use it for ironing board covers. It, it is a yardage type product. Um, and then all of mine, I just did a quick binding with um, bias tape. So this is double fold purchased bias tape. And I start in this corner where my little tab is gonna be. I go around, turn my corners, sew here, sew here, and then I sew off about six inches. Cut my binding and then fold it back on itself. And that makes the little curly Q loop. So it's all done in one piece. I love that idea. I robbed that from uh, store bought. I love that idea because I just do it traditionally. Um, something that I found out about potholders, these are the three that I did and then I did some other projects as well. Um, I don't know if any of you remember maybe 20 years ago there was a handy heart potholder pattern. And I have made my potholders all of my life since then for my kitchen. And um, 
Then I, about three or four years ago, I started using a quilt block to quilt the center. And guess what? I still had the Insulbrite, the 100% uh, cotton batting on each side. They were still burning my hands. I couldn't get anything from the kitchen to my dining room without my hands burning. And I couldn't understand it. And in Everett, when I was in Everett uh, last week, somebody came up with why that happens. They were smarter than me. The holes in the quilting allow the heat to go through. So from now on, when I make pot holders, I'm not going to put that beautiful, this has a beautiful uh, eight inch quilt block that I quilted. And I don't know that if you stitch in the ditch, it's going to make that much difference. But when you have a quilt block, um, it was, I was so grateful that, that that person said that because now I can make them so they don't burn. So these are the pot holders that we made. I made a trivet to go along with mine. I have an RV. We just bought a new RV last spring. And I won't, don't, oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't, I'm used to having it hooked on. And I don't have any pot holders in it. The, I have really old ones. And so these pot holders are gonna go in that. But this is a trivet. And I did use a beautiful eight inch block to do that, to quilt it, but I don't think it probably will be an issue with a trivet, just with um, the uh, pot holders. Now, ever since I did uh, the um, inspirational mug rugs a few times ago, I like this size because it can be, I call it um, just mug mats for kids. Um, I made a set of four at Christmas time for my little grandson. He loves them. Um, all I did was use a quilt block in the center and then I pieced around it. You can make it as big as you want. Kids love these things and moms and dads love it because it protects their furniture. So that is uh, what we've done out of the potholder book. And I think the last thing that we have to share with you today is our jacket. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, this is probably, it is the Alston reversible jacket here. Oh, we have thumbnailer. Gail is going to show thumbnailer as well. This is the Alston reversible jacket and it is from uh, Soda Grow. They are an Australian company. It goes from extra small to extra uh, 4XL. So there's a wide variety of um, sizes and it is oversized and so it makes a really nice jacket. Now you can line it like here or you can make it out of just a single uh, piece of fabric if it's the same on both sides. It doesn't have to be the same on both sides. This is actually a Pendleton wool that I probably bought 20 years ago and guess how much it was a yard. It is a rayon wool and polyester uh, blend. I got it at the Pendleton Woolen Mills in Oregon. It was two dollars a yard. This jacket cost me four dollars and I made it for my youngest daughter. I did put belt loops on the back. It calls for belt loops on the back and in the front, but I haven't put them in the front yet because I don't know how she wants to belt it. Everything was done on the serger. Now I will tell you that it took me as long to figure out how to bind it as it did to make the jacket. It has a collar, a two-piece sleeve, a front, a back, and the pockets. Simple, simple. I made two trips to Joanne's, bought two half yards of knit fabric, thinking that I was gonna bind it with that. And one morning I got up, after I thought way too much about it, I got up and I said, I'm going to surge that. If kids can wear jeans that have holes in it and it can be fashionable, I can surge it, turn the edge under, and it can be fashionable. So that's what I did, and it worked out just great. Um, as I say, you can make it out of all different kinds of fabrics, and it really is a great jacket. I'm going to go ahead and turn the time over to Gail. And, oh, I forgot to tell you about this mat. i got to tell you. I simply love this mat. 
I use fusible batting for all of my quilts that I do. And it is fusible on both sides. So I prepare my quilt back. I cut my batting the same size. Now, by the way, when you do edge to edge, you need to make your quilt bindings four inches bigger, or your backing and, and batting four inches bigger all the way around. So what I do is I cut out my backing, I cut out my batting, and then I have one of these press sheets, and I lay it on, either on my ironing board or I have a June Taylor pressing mat. I lay it on that and I put my fusible batting down. I have my backing on top and I start pressing from the center and I press out. And that gives me a very sturdy uh, thing to flip over, add the top of my quilt, do the same thing and press it. And then I don't have to pin, I don't have to spray baste, and it gives me a very, uh, very sturdy uh, sandwich to take and do my edge to edge quilting. And so that's what that mat is for. Thank you, Gil. I, it was buried up here on the table. It was, it was. <laughs> you do have a few things on our table. Yes. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Imbrillian's thumbnailer. Now, if you have a, you can just turn the camera off completely. Yeah. If you have a computer software, uh, digitizing software, you probably already have the capability of viewing your embroidery designs on your computer, uh, looking at your little thumbnails. But if not, then do we have the, the yeah. screen? Um, if not, then you can use this as a standalone piece of software that would let you um, view the it's pictures. Not, it's not computing up to it's, oh, it's, it's there. <laughs> Um, this is going to show you a preview of what your embroidery designs look like. So you get to open up the control panel on your software and you are going to choose the types of files that you would have on your computer that you want to view from a Brother Baby Lock version of a PES um, embroidery file or a VIP or an HUS. Those are going to be your standard uh, domestic, but maybe you've got a Bernina, or you have some industrial uh, commercial files, and you want to see what they look like, you choose your different formats. And then you are going to say, okay, this will also let you view um, FCM and FCM and SVG, which are going to be your scan and cut files. So this is uh, Anne's computer, so she has to go find her files here. Um, if you did not have a piece of software like this, then you might see either um, that little PDF picture or just a little piece of paper um, to what the file looks like when you're over in your Explorer side. But here, you're going to have full uh, images of what those embroidery files are, so you don't have to um, decipher some of those titles and some companies are a little bit better than others about putting a title on there that makes sense um, but without bringing all of those designs over to your machine you can simply navigate through a file folder and decide which of those hearts you really want to stitch out it will also if you hover over that tell you how many stitches are in that design how many colors are in that design what your size is of your uh, design, so that can help you make smart choices, especially when they have um, small, medium, large, or ABC of the same um, file. So it is a simple add-on software for, what? Um, I wanted to show you that you can view cut files too. Now, you want to tell them about the update on Canvas while I'm doing, while I'm doing this? Yes, so if you have a scan and cut and you have Canvas workspace um, on your computer, there is a new update for that piece of software, which is free. And if you go download the update, you will be able to have previews of your cut files. And if you've played around with Canvas before, you know that that is a huge improvement. Um, the only way before that to bring up cut files was to go into your Canvas workspace catalog or to put them all on a USB and put them right into your machine. 
So, or you would have to import them one at a time into um, a mat um, file. So having them just to be able to glance at is a huge improvement. So those are SVG, which is um, cut files for your scan and cut. So they're improving all of the time. They have also added to that, um, I forgot, a fit to path. So that means you can choose an arc, you can choose a box, you can choose any shape that you want, you can put in some words, and you can have the two marry together, which means your words are going to follow the um, shape that you have put in there. So that is a, a fun new um, feature on that software as well. All right, okay. so can you think of anything else, Anne? I I think that we pretty much covered it. Uh, thank you for being with us today. and. And uh, if you're interested in any of the products, all you have to do is you can order them online and uh, they will be sent to you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.